With these two helper functions uh, in place now, we're ready to go back and consider interp. Remember, we need to change interp to uh, take a list of function definitions in addition to the expression. So what I have as a starting point is our old interp, just with the extra cases filled in with four dots. The four dots mean uh, I, I can actually run the program as long as it doesn't reach that point. And all of our old test cases are here, and, they, and they've all still been passing. But now I'm adding uh, the list of depths here as a new argument. And that means I need to change the recursive calls to pass that list of definitions along for the ride. And I need to update all my uh, interp calls here. So when we have uh, these old expressions, they didn't rely on any function definitions. So I can just provide an empty list of function definitions as a second argument. So now we have uh, still our old code updated to take a list of function definitions, and, and they still pass. But now let's consider the, the new cases. So dealing with expressions that are identifiers, let's make a test case for that. So if we parse just x, uh, what happens when x is our whole program? Well, when we run this, we can't give a result, right? Because x is not uh, substituted away. It's not inside of a function. So let's make it report an error. I'm going to use the words free variable for that error. Okay. So when we're parsing, when we're interpreting just an identifier, we're always just going to raise an error from interp that says free variable, except in the actual error message, I'll let you know which variable it was that wasn't found. Um, that is the name s. OK, that takes care of identifiers easily enough. Um, I misspelled raises. There we go. Okay, so now those tests pass. Let's move on to function calls. So let's try interpreting a function call like double of x. Now in this case, if I put an empty list of definitions, we're going to be in the, in the error world that we don't necessarily want to be in. So I'm going to use this uh, definition that I defined earlier, double def and put that into my list of definitions. So now I'm calling double of x. Uh, let's make it double of 8 um, with double def. And what should we get? Since double doubles its argument, we should get a 16 out. Okay, so that's our test case. Now in the actual implementation, we've got a symbol to work with, and we've got an argument expression. Our template tells us that we should almost certainly call interp on the argument with the definitions. And is that what we want to do? In this case, we have 8, so it seems like we don't need to interpret. But if we made that 4 plus 4, uh, then we would want to interpret that to get to an 8. So interpreting there is a good idea. What is it that we want to do with that 8, though? We want to pass it to double. That is, we want to go get double's body expression, replace the x with 8, and then interpret that. So a substitution needs to happen. We need to substitute the result of interpreting the argument in place of the function argument name in the function argument body, in the function body. Uh, where do we get this name x? It comes from the function definition, but right now we just have s, which is a name like double. So we need to go from this name double to an actual function definition. We have a function that does that called getFunDefs, which takes the name and the list of definitions and finds us an actual definition. I'll put these into a block so I can have a local definition and then use it. Now that I have d, I can get the argument name as um, fd.arg of d, and I can get the body as fd.body of d. So we, uh, we take the result of interpreting 4 plus 4, which is 8. We substitute it in for fdrd, which is x, in x plus x. What we will get back is an 8 plus an 8, which is not a number yet. So we will need to interpret that uh, again with all of our definitions. So it's still not quite right, um, because when I try it, I get an error about expressions versus integers. So the problem is that interp gives us back an integer, but subst wants uh, an expression as its first argument. 
since we know it's always an integer, it's easy to convert it into an expression using int e. So with that replacement, it works out fine. Notice uh, let's, we can add more tests here to make sure that if we interp parse of quadruple of uh, 7, then uh, for quadruple to work, we need quadruple def in our list of definitions. And because quadruple def calls double def, we need that in our list of definitions. But when we have all those in place, we should get a 28 back. And with that extra test, things still work out. One thing to, uh, to emphasize here is that in interp, this call to interp was suggested by the template. So that was in some sense an obvious call to interp. But when we got an expression back from subst and then we had to call interp again on that, that did not come from the template. That took some creativity. And that really is what uh, makes function calls interesting. 